OpenVAS is a powerful vulnerability management tool. The key is to know how to use it properly. What's up guys, this is Dan Durant and I hope you're doing fantastic. In this video, I'm going to show you how to scan for vulnerabilities using OpenVAS, how to set up the right configurations, how to automate your scanning, and how to manage the entire remediation and mitigation process. So get your coffee, get ready, and let's go. If you haven't installed OpenVAS on your Kali system yet, don't worry, just go down below, click on the link. I have a great tutorial on how to easily and properly install OpenVAS on Kali systems. Okay, the first task is to open up a terminal, go into sudo su, type in your password. Oops, there you go. And let's retrieve the feeds for OpenVAS. OpenVAS usually updates the feeds pretty much every few days. So it is more convenient to just do this before you even start the process. All right, let's do that. So you type in GVM dash feed update. And now let's just wait for a little bit. Perfect. All right, so now let's start up the OpenVAS service. For that, you're going to type in gvm start. Automatically, OpenVAS is going to open up a browser for you. So let's just sign in. Go to administration and feed status. Now, as you can see, the NVTs were updated today. And the CVEs or the SCAP data, as well as the CERT data were updated two days ago. So we are good. Now this is the dashboard, right? So this is going to tell you all the MVTs that were updated into the system and uh, over here and then your current tasks. So if I go into scans, you'll see that I have only one scan in here for one network. Let me walk you around OpenVAS before we get into the scanning part. So in the administration, you can set up users, you can set up groups, roles, and permissions, right? And then you have the feed status as well as your LDAP and radius configurations if you want to assign users, username and passwords using LDAP or radius. Over here in configuration, you're gonna see targets, right? So all the targets that you set up in here, including subnets and networks or individual IP addresses, as you can see, then you're going to see port lists. So the port lists work in terms of uh, all IANA assigned TCP. So 5,836 TCP, or you can do the all IANA TCP and UDP which in total is 11,000 ports, or you can do all TCP and Nmap top 100 UDP. In that case, it will be 65,535 TCP and then the 100 UDP. So in order to create a new set, then I'll just go into new here. I'm gonna name it all TCP and UDP. My setup is going to be T1265535 for TCP and the same for UDP, 65,535. All the TCP and UDP ports for you. Then if you look at the configurations and scan configs, then you see a series of scan configs in here. So your base, right? So it uses the uh, the MVTs required for the scan, right? Really basic. Uh, then you have the discovery, the uh, MT. So this is these are for templates. Um, the full and fast host discovery, the uh, log four shell. So that one only has twenty nine different MVTs and the system discovery has 30. The most used one is actually the full and fast, right? And the full and fast has all the MVTs used in OpenVAS. You can also set up alerts right in here for your convenience and as well as uh, things like scheduling. So you can schedule automatic scanning every month, then you can set it up in here. The other thing that you can do is uh, the report formats, right? The most used ones are the CSV results as well as the PDFs if you want to give that to your clients. The scanners, 
There's two types of scanners, the OpenVAS default, which is the one that is used the most. However, if you're not allowed to scan constantly on a network, you can use the CVE. So first you do the default and then the CVE. The CVE is basically, it uses the data that you already collected to see what else is vulnerable on the system or what new vulnerabilities have been introduced in the system. If you look at the SEC info, you'll see the MVTs and what they are. Right. So these are all the new advisories that have come in and have been applied to the OpenVAS engine. Then the CVEs. So these are all new CVEs that are in the wild, as well as CPEs, oval definitions, cert bundles, as well as the DFN bundles in here. That's the complete engine with everything that you need for doing the vulnerability assessments. OpenVAS is not just a scanner, it's a complete management tool. So let me show you how this works. I can create remediation tickets. So every time I do a scan, I can assign tickets and then work through those tickets. As you can see, I have opened this ticket and I assign the user admin. I can put notes for open. And then once it's fixed, I can actually add other notes as I go along. It also works with compliances. So if you can do different types of compliances and compliance audits, so you can create a compliance audit in here for your system, open GOS or anything you want in there. The other thing is the business map. So I can create a business map process in here by clicking on my map. I'm going to call it mitigation. And this is the beginning of my map. I can create other nodes on the map. So step one, for example, and then I'm going to create a step two. And I'm going to create step one B. And I'm going to put this one down here like this. Then I'm going to add the nodes from one to the other like that. From here, I can actually assign the host. So if I click on the host that I have targeted, and then click on assign. And like that, I can actually assign different hosts to different steps. So as I go through my mitigation process, I can actually type in what I am mitigating on this business planning process. Now let's get into the scans. In the scans, I'm going to see the results of the scan and the reports. So this is the host in here, the status and the number of reports. If I click on last report, you will see here that I go into the results and these are all the vulnerabilities that the scanner has found on this particular host. You can see the vulnerabilities, what type of uh, fix they're assigned to. So for example, this one is a vendor fix. This one has no fix. Then you have mitigation and so on. The severity in terms of the CVSS and the quality of detection, as well as the IP address and the location. If I click on any of these, then it was going to give me a summary, the detection results, as well as the product detection results and the insights. So all the information you need to be able to fix this vulnerability is going to be in here, as well as all the resources in terms of links to Mitra and other types of websites. The other thing that you see here is that I can assign tickets, right? So you see that the mitigation tickets is exactly the same as the one that is portrayed in here. So I already assigned a ticket to this. The next tabs are hosts, right? So this host, and you can see the operating system, the ports, the apps, and the other information. The three ports that were scanned, the applications that the scanner have found, like MySQL, for example, or OpenSSH, the operating systems and the CVEs that were found. These are closed CVEs. So anything that you work on as you're mitigating items, then the closed CVEs are going to be found in here as you progress through your remediation mitigation process. TLS certificates, error messages. Sometimes what happens is that OpenVAS does a scan and then it encounters some sort of error and it cannot conduct that scan further. All of those items are going to be recorded in here. If we go to reports, you're going to see the reports that I have 
already created and then as well as the results here in the results you can see that i have a ticket assigned to this php end of life detection so now if i want to assign another ticket what i do is i click on the cve here click on the magnifying glass and then over here you'll see that i can create a ticket so fix on step two and then if i go into resilience then you'll see that I have two tickets assigned in there. This is a great tool, not just for finding vulnerabilities, but managing vulnerabilities, fixing vulnerabilities, and having some sort of project management, including tasks for you as you go along. Now let's do some real scanning. So I'm going to power up my terminal. I'm going to clean this up, and then I'm going to do a trace route. Google.com. And as you can see here, the network is 179. So 192, 168, 179, right? So now let's do a quick Nmap. Nmap SP 192, 168.179.0 slash 24, right? So let's do this Nmapping. So what I'm doing basically is trying to get a list of IP addresses that are already up. So we're going to put that into OpenVAS. So you can see that there are 25 hosts as opposed to 255, right? This list is not very nice. So what I'm going to do is I have a cheat sheet here on my website. As you can see, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to do an Nmap again like that and paste, right? Uh, there you go. And just get rid of this. And let's do it again. Perfect. So as you can see, I have a very nice and neatly organized list of IP addresses. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to nano and I'm going to put this on my desktop and it's going to be called IP list dot text TXT. There you go. I'm going to paste all the IP addresses in here. Control X and then Y. Perfect. So now we're ready to start scanning. So let's create a task, click on new task, and let's name it something. So I'm gonna name it my network like that. Scan targets, click on new, and I'm going to put 192.168.179-24. And here on host, I'm going to click on from file, and then going to the desktop and select IP list. So this is the list of IPs that are already created from here i'm going to assign all tcp and udp ports as i set it up and i'm going to use the con the scan config default if you want to you can actually tell openbass to log in using ssh smb or esxi or even snmp in this case i don't need to do that this is my own network so i'm just going to click on save I can also exclude hosts if I want to. And now I'm going to schedule this. So I want to make sure that this is scheduled every month. As you can see here, I can schedule this every month, every week. In the meantime, I'm not going to do this. I'm just going to click on cancel. Over here in the scanner is going to be open bass default. And then the scan configuration is going to be full and fast. In terms of the quality of detection. So quality of detection is very important. So the higher the quality of detection, the less amount of false positives that you're going to get. However, there is a problem. Let's say you set up the quality of detection at 70. What happens if the quality of detection is 60? It's not going to be showing in this report. So what I want to do is do two scans. I'm going to do one scan at 70% QOD, and then I'm going to do another one at 30% QOD. That way, when I get both reports, I can compare the results and see whether the 30% is going to give me a bit more information and probably find vulnerabilities that are not false positives, but actually real vulnerabilities. The last thing I want to talk about is the throttle and the throttle you find the right down here. Maximum concurrently executed MVTs per host is set of four. And then the maximum concurrently scanned host is 20. 20 hosts are going to be scanned at the same time using four NTVs per host. That is 40 NTVs at one time. So you need to consider two things for this. 
The first one is the stability of the network. If you have a very unstable network, it's better to throttle your scanner down so that way, even though it's going to take a longer time, it's not going to affect the network. The second one is your own computer. If you don't have enough RAM or CPU power, then if you throttle your scan too much, you're going to start getting timeouts and your Kali system is going to crash. I'm just going to set this at six MVTs and 20 hosts. Now save, then just click on the play button to start. And now we wait. Just keep in mind that depending on your network, this process might take up to 12 hours, right? It's a very long, complex scan. Minimum for one host is probably going to take about 15 minutes for several hosts is going to be taking an hour or two hours up to all the way to one day or two days, even a week. If you have a very complex and big network, let's check out how your Kali system is doing. Click on the terminal. Let me clear the terminal and type in H stop. As you can see, my memory is going at 1.6 gigabytes and I have a swap going on of 349 megabytes. So as you can see, I'm using my resources at 100%. That's not good. My system might crash at any time right now. In the latest versions of Kali, you can also check how your computer is doing by clicking on the blue task manager. As you can see, my CPU is running at 100% and my memory is running at 87%. All right, so my scan is finally done. It took about one hour to complete. And now let's check out some of the results. All right, so we are back on the task dashboard. I have two reports because I did two scans on this network and my severity now is 10. There is an error going up here. That means that the severity increased. And the reason why I did two scans is because I wanted to put a meta exploitable server on the background as well. And that's why you see that this jumped up. So if I click on the last report, here's the report. It took 57 minutes and it's done. It scanned 17 hosts, right? And then here are the result. <laughs> Most of the stuff that comes out is from the Metasploitable OS, Metasploitable 2. We'll see here the uh, hosts, right? With the IP addresses, the operating systems, the ports that are open. Then if I click on ports, you'll see all the ports that OpenBAS was able to scan all the applications, MySQL, Postgres, Samba, etc., Apache, the operating systems. So Ubuntu, Ubuntu is basically the Metasploitable 2, um, then Linux and Microsoft. There's a free BSD in there and then all the CVEs in here. No error messages, as you can see, one close CVE. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you had fun and it was informative for you. If you have any comments, any suggestions, just put them down below and I hope to see you next week. Stay safe, stay secure.